song filled with a chance to come together. Come together to worship, to care and support one another. In this day, in this time of worship, we are invited to pause and feel God's presence, to celebrate the goodness of creation, and to draw one another in a circle of love and peace. Whether we are here in person or worshiping from home, it is good to be together. If you look in your bulletin, you'll see our announcements for today. Um, just a reminder that we are using a summer bulletin, so if you don't want to take it home, you can just leave it at the back and we'll read stuff up with announcements and we'll uh, have it ready for next week. And the details are all, the numbers are all in the back. If you've been looking for those, that's where they are. A big thank you, and um, well, thank you because you're here all the time, to the Bell family for sharing the gift of music with us today. We are truly blessed to be um, recipients of your, your gift of music. Thank you. From our West Ontario Waterway Prayer Cycle, we hold in our prayers for Enfield United Church. Please note that there is a great help at the back. It's just on this side of the table. Um, that is for Women's House. And we are collecting, the spiritual committee is inviting us to collect items for the shelter of Women's House. Um, we're looking for stuff like showers, so towels, space cloths, Kleenex, um, the list is in the bulletin. Do you note that the office is closed this week and next week because Laurel is away. I'm around, um, so if you need to hold me, I'm, I'm here. Um, but Laurel will be away for the next few weeks and we pray that she has a restful and rejuvenating time uh, on her holidays. Uh, we're going to do a summer cleanup of the church and it's just the extras that Randy doesn't have time for. And so you look around and you'll see some cobwebs and um, just some things that need some tender loving care. So the sign-up sheet's on the kitchen door if anyone would like to help. Uh, we need more than just Lynn and I. Um, it's a big church. So if uh, you could be here the 23rd at 9 o'clock in the morning. Thank you.
celebrate Jeff's birthday on Friday. My wife has to be there. Let us send ourselves this time of worship as we let go of our burdens, as we let go of our troubles, as we let go of our to-do lists and those things that fill our brains and, and sometimes drive us that noise us. As we send ourselves in this time of love and community, as we send ourselves in God. Let's take a moment of still.
the love of those who celebrate with us and who hold us in our grief. In each moment, in your prayers, the songs and prayers, the questioning and the questing, the worship and the time of refreshment. In each moment, in your prayers, in your presence. We join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, send us in this time that we may be aware of the sacredness of life and our lives may be nourished and nourished and led in the whole and action. Amen. to more. 
I'm going to do in the church time. So you're all invited, as always, to do response. So I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> in, in our house, in our, in our kitchen, we've got this little stand and it's got shelves on it. And, and like a lot of shelves in the kitchen, it's full of cookbooks. How many of you have cookbooks in your <laughs> United Church cookbook. You got the United Church cookbook. It's the first one. I couldn't break, bring life break bread together because Jessica's cookbook from her grandmother. She's doing the same children's time at her church. So right. I brought I brought my cookbook. One I bought myself when I was near the end of high school. It's it's the big old joy of cooking. How do you call the joy of cooking on your book? It's like the encyclopedia of cooking. So I'll tell you, doesn't that have pictures? It's got lots of words. But like a lot of them, but maybe your cookbook's like this. If I were to hold it like this and open up and shake it, a lot of pieces of paper would fall. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you have, like me, written in the front or other parts some of your favorite recipes. So this is filled with some of my favorite recipes. You can tell which pages I've used because they're, they're dominant or, or stained with stuff. <laughs> but in the front, it's one of my, my favorite recipes, the family recipe. Maple tarts. So here's what goes inside of maple tart, not the shell, but the inside. Half cup margarine, one cup brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons maple flavoring, one cup flour, one cup chopped walnuts. It's a recipe my grandfather made all the time, especially around Thanksgiving. You also need some jam, let's go in there. You need some jam as well. I pull this up because I don't make them that often. And even though I've made them lots of times, I need to look it up at once and make sure I've got the recipe right. Because everyone's all need to do that with our favorite recipes. And sometimes when you get really skilled at baking or cooking, you can play with the recipe. I don't know how many of you do that. Some people, some people like to experiment cooking. Some people like to, okay, this is what it says. It says only one cup of flour of sugar. You shall not add any more. Some of us know, okay, I can play. I'm going to add a little bit more sugar or a little less to all the taste or maybe some almond flavoring in there. The recipe you come back to it always shows you what are the main things you need. Any flour or flour substitute in this recipe, otherwise you just got sugar in, and margarine and, and egg in a little pastry, which may be good, probably is good. You need that maple flavor, otherwise it's not a maple tart. You can call something else, but it's not a maple tart. This gives you the recipe. In our faith, in the church, we're called to always go back to what are the main ingredients. When we hear scripture reading that challenges us, when, when we struggle with something in the church, when we celebrate in the church, we're invited to go back to some of the main ingredients. And in our faith, one thing that comes up over and over again, in the Bible comes up over and over again, is that we are loved by God. We are fully loved by God. We are blessed by God. We are blessed to be a blessing to others. These are central pieces that we go back to again and again. In times of struggle, we can go back. We are loved. We are a blessing. In times of joy, we are loved. We are a blessing. Hallelujah. In times where we sit beside others who are struggling, we are loved and we are a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Like a good recipe, we're invited to go back to those main ingredients that help us to remember what all this is about, what all of our life is about, what all of faith in the church is about. We are loved. We are blessed. Other people are loved, and they're blessed. And that's good news. So may we celebrate that. And if you pull out a cookbook today, maybe think of that too, that as ingredients in your life that make life rich and beautiful. Let us join singing our next hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, number 357, in the voice of Samantha.
hear how God is at work in our lives, in our world, in our minute and mission, in our scripture. The United Church of Canada's Five Oaks Education and Retreat Centre was the vision of Bev Oden in the 1950s. The first programs began in the summer of 1952. Five Oaks has gone through many changes over its 67-year history. In 2016, when the centre was planning to close, a new vision rose from the ashes of the past and Five Oaks was transformed into an intercultural centre. Continuing its partnership with Six Nations, on whose sacred land Five Oaks sits, the Centre has recently added a new partnership with the Muslim community. My name is Michael Schuberg and I am the Operations Manager here at Five Oaks and I came to be in this place uh, because I have loved it for a long time and when the opportunity came to uh, join the team, I jumped at it. Some programming that has happened continues to be United Church focused, so we still continue to offer uh, our NEOS Youth Ministry Training Programs, Confirmation Weekends, Avoda Work Camps, uh, all sorts of events uh, for a variety of uh, church organizations, but as well we have uh, begin to we have begun to offer programs uh, for uh, indigenous community groups. So we've had um, Warrior Camp, which is a training program for indigenous youth. Uh, we have our Native Peoples Retreat coming up. We have a grandmother's teas and water ceremonies. Uh, we're about to build a purification lodge in the traditional Haudenosaunee style. We're afraid of losing the vision of what Five Oaks really is, a sacred place. It was a hard way to get on a new journey, but it was the best thing. I'm Cindy Peterson. I'm part of the board of directors here at Five Oaks. You can't smell me through the camera, but right now I smell like campfire because we're doing a youth retreat and burning lots of scrub brush to get ready for our next season and new visitors here at Five Oaks. I became involved with the board as um, a chapter was being written that Five Oaks may close. And there was a group of us, um, ragtag group, that came together and thought um, that perhaps Five Oaks could live to write another chapter um, and maybe even a different book. We might have to close one book and create an, a new book, a whole new story. Oh, yeah. Pardon? Oh. This is uh, sap. That is the juice, that's the bloodline of the tree. You know the maple syrup that you like? Uh -huh. That's the beginnings of maple syrup. Oh. Down, the sugars remain and the water boils off to have the maple syrup that we're going to go have at lunch today. Oh. So at Five Oaks, it seems to be this beautiful, sacred space where people just come and they listen to each other and that sharing in that space just permeates you. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but there is something about the energy of the land and the energy of the people that when we come together here, it permeates a good word for it. <laughs> you seem to be carrying a lot of wood today. Thank you. There you go, enjoy. Regretting everything now, Jack. <laughs> everything in there. I just, I take a little bit of you and you take a little bit of me and we take a little bit of the land and we leave a little bit of ourself in one another and in the land. Your gifts to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada help support programs like these. Thank you and please continue to give. The scripture this morning is from Luke 12, 32 to 40. Treasures in heaven, my little group of disciples, don't be afraid. Your father wants to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give the money to the poor. Make yourselves money bags that never wear out. Make sure your treasure is safe in heaven, where thieves cannot steal it and moths cannot destroy it. Your heart will always be where your treasure is, faithful and unfaithful servants. 
Be ready and keep your lamps burning, just like those servants who wait for their master to return from a wedding feast. As soon as he comes and knocks, they open the door for him. Servants are fortunate if their master finds them awake and ready when he comes. I promise you that he will get ready and have his servants sit down so he can serve them. Those servants are really fortunate if their master finds them ready, even though he comes late at night or early in the morning. You would surely not let a thief break into your home if you knew when the thief was coming. So always be ready. You don't know when the Son of Man will come. Thanks to be to God for the reading of the scripture. Do not be afraid, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the dominion. May you hear the words of my mouth and listen to the meditations of my heart. May God bless all of our reflections. Ten years ago, on a warm night in Ottawa, while visiting the city for a, a church workshop weekend, Jess and I met with a friend of hers, a person she has known since high school, that we hadn't seen for many years. After sharing a wonderful meal together, we sat and we talked, and the conversation turned to a conversation about the choices we make in how we live. It was the type of conversation, the intimate type of conversation, where you know that what is being shared is really important. And you know that that conversation will leave you a little more inspired in life. Now Jessica's friend has always been a very intelligent, talented, and driven person. She is one of those people who can do, well, pretty much anything she puts her mind and heart into doing. At the time, she was working for an aerospace company as an engineer. And she didn't go into detail about her income, but she did tell us that the money she made caused her to reflect deeply about the type of life she wanted to live. She knew, she told us, that she could afford a large, expensive home but she was happy in her small batch of apartment that has served her so well for so many years. She could buy a fancy car, but she really enjoyed biking to work and taking the city's transit. She could work all the time, always be on call, and aggressively climb the ladders of her profession, but she wanted to take the time to enjoy life. She had decided, she told us, to live simply in order to enjoy life. Her reflecting upon money and possessions has shaped her life in profound and pretty amazing ways. While not often talked about publicly, I've noticed that many, many people in diverse places of all ages and all different income levels, people are reflecting on how money on money and possessions, and discerning what kind of life they feel called to live. The crowd stands around Jesus, listening eagerly. Jesus has been talking about money. Money in their culture is becoming increasingly important. More and more people rely on it to buy the necessities of life, to pay temple and civil taxes, to build up their possessions and status. At the same time, poverty, debt, and exploitive taxation and high exploiting interest are an all too common and increasingly painful reality in Jesus' time. The accumulation of wealth by some at the expense of others is growing. Jesus knows that a conversation about faith must include a conversation about money. As we heard last week, if you were here last week, this conversation about money in the Gospel of Luke began in response to a question about dividing inheritance. Jesus has responded by telling the crowd a parable 
about the death of a wealthy landowner, calling them to live richly towards God and remember that life is more than what we possess. Next in the passage we don't hear, Jesus invites people to let go of their word over food and clothing, saying, look at the flowers, look at the birds, see how God provides for them. God will provide for you as well. Strive first for the dominion of God, and all these things will be given to you as well. And Jesus' discourse on money continues today. By telling today's parable of the watchful servants and the homeowner and the thief, and by saying, you also must be ready. The human one is coming at an unexpected hour. Jesus cranks up the urgency. He places the conversation about money within the, here's a fancy word today, eschatological framework. I won't quiz who knows what the word eschatology means. But eschatology is the fancy theological word relating to a future vision that is filled with images of Jesus' return and judgment as well as the renewing of all creation. By placing this conversation within the eschatological framework, Jesus in the Gospel of Luke is telling the crowd and telling us that all this conversation about money and possessions, well, it matters greatly. It matters because it is part of God's vision for salvation, for the healing of all creation. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is God's good pleasure to give you the dominion. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourself that do not wear out and unfailing treasures in heaven where no thief can come near and no moth can destroy. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Like those who are gathered around Jesus, in today's gospel reading, we too live in a world where money, possessions, and we can add power and privilege. These things are incredibly influential in our lives and in our world. These things can be used for good, but they can also be used in destructive and divisive ways. We live in a society that knows all too well poverty and debt and fear of scarcity, that fear of never having enough and financial exploitation and injustice. When we pay attention, when we dare to look closely at this painful reality, we too can catch the urgency of Jesus' call for a new and renewed relationship with money and possession. Like Jesus, Jess, Jessica, probably that two J words in sermon, like Jessica's friend. As a church, we are invited to reflect sincerely and deeply about our relationship with money, our own personal relationship and our congregation's relationship with money and possessions and power and privilege. In today's gospel reading, Jesus asks for nothing less than for us, for his followers, to go and sell everything they own, give it to those in need and come and follow him. It's a big ask. Thomas Colin and reflects that historically the church has placed a lot of emphasis on a theology of self-inflicted poverty and radical sharing for the gospel. There are religious orders based on this call, and throughout time people have experimented with communal Christianity. But Colinan points out that most of us are not in a position to relinquish all that we have because of family or other commitments and responsibilities. Most of us cannot respond to Christ's full calling to sell everything we own, to give it to those in need, to trust completely on God's grace. Some people are called and able to follow this call. Most of us aren't. The question becomes then, what do we make of this urgent call of our faith to go and sell all that we possess, give to others, and follow Christ. The call to be here today. Into this important conversation about power, the power of money and possessions, 
Jesus offers and begins with blessing. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Little flock, it is God's good pleasure to give you the dominion. By reorienting their lives on God, Jesus is inviting his followers to see that God has already. God has empowered and equipped and entrusted them. And this doesn't rely on how much money they have or what they own or how much power they have in a society. God has already empowered, equipped, and entrusted them to be part of God's kingdom building. Right there, right there. Where your treasure lies, that's where your heart is. Seek first God's kingdom and everything else will fall into place. All that they are and all that they have is part of God's healing and wholeness making in this world. Jesus invites the crowd to place their whole life, their whole self, into God's vision, God's good vision for creation. Yes, most of us cannot live the full radical message we hear today. Thomas Cullinan continues his reflection saying that what we need is a theology of possessions. We need to contemplate deeply and regularly to explore our relationship with all the things we have in connection with our faith. What does it mean, he writes, for me to own this car, this house, to have this talent, this skill, to be able to indulge in so many things? We can act to be given this power and privilege in our society. We are invited to reflect on all that we have and all that we are and to ask the question, how do I respond then to Christ's call? What we share here every week in worship is a pretty amazing thing. Worship is a place where we practice Christ-centered living for the other 167 hours of our week. Each week we practice Christ's radical call to turn our lives towards God and offer back to God all that we are and all that we have. We practice this in throughout worship, but in a certain spot in particular, during our offering time. The offering is more than the simply a time of placing money into a plate so that the, off so that the institution of the church can survive so we can upkeep our building, pay those in paid ministry, share our space for the good work of our community, or support the work of the wider church. Our offering is an invitation to sacrifice. And sacrifice is a scary word and sometimes in our world, but sacrifice really at the core means to make a thing sacred. Sacrifice, to make a thing sacred. The time of offering is a time we are invited to respond to God's love and grace by sacrifice, by making whole, our whole self to God. We turn towards God and we offer back to God not just our time or talent or treasure, not just a little piece, but our whole self. We entrust our whole life to God and to God's call for each one of us, to God's vision of healing and wholeness for all creation. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. It's amazing wording there, because it's where we place our time and energy and life. That's where our heart will fall. Jesus reminds us that we are blessed to be a blessed. That flows throughout Scripture. All that we are and all that we have is part of God's rich blessing in this world. God has equipped and entrusted us to join with God in building God's dominion on earth right here and right now. We are part of God's good work of renewing the very foundations of this world so that all people and all creation may share fully in God's richest blessing of life. Friends, may we live richly towards God. Seek first God's dominion and direct our treasure to where our heart is. For we are all part of God's sacred love story in this world.
Thanks be to God. Amen. Back to my singing, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, number 356.
compassionate one, bless the gifts of our hands and the gifts of our hearts, that we should love and be the of this world. Amen. And we offer our prayers, our prayers for ourselves, our prayers of others, our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers. After the words, Holy Spirit, I invite you to respond, be with us as we pray. Let us pray. <coughs> o Holy One, creator and sustainer and giver of life, we thank you for the blessings of this day, for all the good things that meet us this morning, for strength that finds us in difficult times, the holy message that you are at work in each one of us, empowering and equipping us to make life a blessing for others, to fill life with joy and strength and peace. Help us to remain mindful, O God, of the rich blessings of life, and help us to remember that we are blessed to be a blessing. Holy Spirit, we pray, O oh God, for the heartbreaking realities of this world. We pray for all who live with violence, violence in word and action, for all who are victims of racism, discrimination, and hatred of all kinds. We remember the people of Dayton and El Paso. We remember the congregation of El Nur Mosque, in Borough, Norway, after yesterday's shooting there. We pray, O oh God, for your peace to be made known, for strength for those who face hatred and violence, for turning of hearts for those who inflict violence on others. We pray for your peace, and we ask that you help us to be part of your peace in this world. Holy Spirit, we pray for all who are grieving, for all who are li living with loss of a loved one, loss of something important in their life, loss of dreams they have for them. We pray for the family and friends of grace given. Holy Spirit, be with us as we pray. We pray, O oh God, for a Grace United Church as they continue to come together for worship after they lost their church building in fire a couple weeks ago. We pray that as they worship in their new and temporary space, O oh God, they may feel your presence and the love and prayer of their neighbor churches in Sudbury and throughout the world. That they may feel your presence leading. Holy Spirit. We pray for all who are undergoing surgery or treatment or living with illness. We pray for living. Holy Spirit. We pray for the people of Hong Kong. We pray for the ministry of Five Hopes and the staff there. And for all whose name we bring to you now, silently you have spoken. Surround them in your love and strength. Help them to feel our Holy Spirit. We pray these prayers to you, God, joining them with the prayers of all creation as we share together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Let us join together closing hymn number 427 to show by touch.